Mixed by Blusher. Hi there, chaps. Um, I said I would do a video on my 10 reasons why I use Reason as a door. Um, I also use Pro Tools when I am on desk, uh, so inside a kind of a situation where I'm using a large format console, but um, within my kind of home working environment, um, I very much prefer to use Reason, and a lot of people are consistently confused um, with that information. Um, so I'm going to go through 10 reasons as to why uh, I use uh, Reason as a door. Um, and uh, yeah, hopefully, uh, you know, you may also see the light as well. So I've been doing this for 19 years um, and like, <clears throat> yeah, I've, I've been through and tried a lot of doors. I've also, you know, been trained um, in Pro Tools, uh, which, um, you know, I've got nothing against Pro Tools. Um, I just work faster and more efficiently um, in reason when I am at home. Um, so the uh, first reason I use a reason uh, is um, it's CPU usage. Um, it's CPU usage is just so incredibly low compared to the other doors that I've used um, uh, with third party plugins, uh, as well as its own kind of plugins and instruments. So you get a bunch of kind of standardized stuff uh, within Reason itself that is just, it's just so low on CPU. And CPU is really important to me when I start stacking up tracks and, and running stuff to bus. And, you know, I hate it when, when, when you uh, kind of get into a, into a door um, and, you know, it starts to stutter and it starts to do some, you know, things that uh, just interrupt the session and make it super annoying. So I can run at a high bit rate. Um, and um, yeah, I, I just, uh, uh, I, I don't have any trouble with my CPU. Um, the the second thing is the mixer. So unlike um, really any other door, uh, Reason has built their mixer around, so let's just chuck some more tracks in here. Reason has built its mixer around um, uh, an SSL, an older SSL analog um, large format console. Um, I think it is the 4000 um, G, I think. Uh, someone might be able to um, uh, confirm that. Anyway. These SSL consoles are uh, specifically known in the industry um, for having uh, a bunch of stuff already on them and being able to change the signal path. So unlike using, you know, a door like FL or using a door like, you know, even kind of Ableton where you're kind of stacking your EQ down kind of here uh, in the bottom section, um, this is literally all on uh, a large format uh, console. Uh, signal chain um, and that's like that's super awesome if you're trying to kind of get to the next stage and be able to walk into studios and use a large format console and, and understand it um, so yeah I'll, I'll just I'll just take you through this this mixer um, and if you know the SSL mixers uh, you know you will know uh, this mixer but I'm, sure, I'm assuming most of you don't um, you have your input gains you can invert your phase uh, so you can literally do that on on console, uh, you can change the signal path. So you can change between your compression, your EQ, or your inserts. So your insert effects, which I'll show you on the rack in a section in a second. Um, you can. <laughs> this is really uh, quite interesting as well. Um, you can filter to dynamic sidechain, uh, which you just can't do that on any other door, unfortunately, and that becomes quite quite helpful when, when you uh, work with sidechain strategies for finding more spaces in your mix. You have a built-in standardized SSL compressor on every single channel. Like I can literally just switch my compressor on on every single channel, change my threshold, my release, my ratios, and like, yeah, it's, it's, it's there. Um, the other thing that you uh, can do, uh, which I will, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll show you now why not, um, is you can sidechain really, really quickly. Um, so let's just, you know, set up a quick sidechain. Here's two channels here. Uh, actually, let's do it with these two channels. Let's get rid of these channels. Da -da -da -da. So we're just working with a couple, uh, whatever, these two channels here. Let's let's just call this one and this two, or orange and blue, whatever you want. So <clears throat> on the mixer, I can, I can literally take uh, the parallel signal. So I can, I can immediately split a signal just by, by taking, uh, by pressing my tab button and taking uh, routing out and into a dynamic side chain input on the mixer itself. And you'll notice that this, uh, this key section comes up and that means that this signal is now going straight into um, this 
channel uh, for sidechain compression. And this compressor, um, and I switch this on, now becomes my sidechain compressor. So if I'm sidechaining kick, I'm sidechaining bass, or I'm doing some kind of crazy things with vocal sidechaining or bus sidechaining even, um, you know, like I can, I can take these two and I can, you know, I can chuck it on bus and, and you know, do, do, do a, you know, a similar strategy here. You know, I could sidechain, you know, one to bus, um, you know, <clears throat> I can do uh, a lot more um, very quickly uh, with uh, a, a large format console and emulation inside of um, of a door. And you've got to remember, like, if you're going into large, you know, format studios and working with that workflow, kind, kind of coming home and working with like one of the less sophisticated doors um, that doesn't have a large format console is kind of like it's frustrating because like you have to kind of put on a different cap for thinking and i find that with reason that's just you know that's just not the case at all um every single channel has a gate there's a gate on everything right and again this comes back down to cpu usage and speed um like i can gate something i can take a vocal that's been recorded and then there's background noise in certain parts i don't have to start coming into the vocal and tr you know like chopping it up and being like okay this section here you know i want to take that out because it's dead space like i don't need to do that i can literally come here i can chuck a gate on i can you know select some of my uh, my dynamics um and that's it the, you know these sections will pull out i'm gonna see if it does yeah these sections will pull out there you go um just by switching a gate on and that's just super easy because you know i've got i've got stacked vocals i'm running a session i'm charging by the hour you know i'm i can flick my gates on like this and like literally when the vocalist isn't singing um you know the, the, there's no signal coming through and uh, no velocity signal coming through um to uh to the uh, the two bus and yeah, I, I I just think that's cool. So that's that's great. I got I got a compressor, I got a gate, I got a side chain here, literally in the dynamic section, um, and I can change the order of um, you know of of that setup as well. So moving on to the EQ, like if I want the want to be doing EQ before compression, and like I do a lot of my EQing with my ears. Um, I'm one of those guys that like I've been doing this for so long that. I stopped looking at graphs a long time ago. I look at kind of the, you know, the graphical, uh, I don't know if that's the one way to put it, the graphical uh, kind of um, appearance of a dynamic EQ spectrum, like for corrective measures. I don't really, you know, I'm looking at it for, for stuff like high frequency uh, limiting. I'm looking at it for stuff like shape, but I'm not looking at it thinking, oh, there's my peak point. Like you just know it at, at, at you know at, at, at some point you will just be able to listen to something and go right that's missing 400 or yeah that's too much in 3k or you know i want to put a little bit more five or a little bit more you know 11 12 whatever so you hit f2 in reason and um bang up comes uh an inbuilt ssl um 4000 console emulation of their you know channel strip eq i can switch that eq one uh you know and I've got two choices here. I can I can control everything here on on the mixer, um, or I can literally take a dynamic EQ approach and start controlling everything, um, you know, uh, with uh, with my mouse and keyboard. So I'm holding Alt here to adjust the Q, and you'll see that Q move. There you go. You'll see it move on the on the on the console as well. Um, you know, I can change uh, to bell modes. I can do uh, low pass free low low pass filters and high pass filters, which is again super easy for um, you know, for vocal just to come into something. Um, let's just see that, you know, if I just uh, see this, actually, let's put this, let's put this down here. So I get a fresh patch and let me just join these back together, you know, and you can just see how quickly these things can be done. Let's run this. And then like, so I'm running here. I've got a signal that's kind of coming through, um, on, on the channel two, uh, I press F2 and bang, I get my audio spectrum. So none of this, like this span bloody, I don't even know what that plugin is, man. Like genuinely, I don't get the get. I don't get it. I don't get why people need a separate plugin to do kind of audio spectrum analysis. Um, <clears throat> this is pretty detailed. Uh, and yeah, I, I can literally switch on. I've I've, I've got a let's say I've got a vocal running through here, um, and I can just I can just add my I can add my filter. I can add my standard filter at 80. There's the curve. There's the, and this is done and built and emulated from an SSL console, so they know that curve, that stand just flipping on that high frequency pass is is a vocal curve. That is a vocal curve, and it's done. You know. 
bang, I'm done. I'm on to the next ne next channel. Um, so yeah, you get an inbuilt uh, uh, dynamic EQ if you press uh, F2, or just a standardized like analog uh, emulation um here and yeah this is this is literally like one of those strips that you buy you know from waves from uh you know universal audio from ssl directly this like ssl have a contract with reason to emulate um everything about that console into reason and it's one of those things that like people don't get that people don't get that there is no other like it has like neve hasn't gone to uh, to FL and gone. Oh yeah, like, hey, take all of our console schematics and make a door out of it. Like you guys don't appreciate how awesome that is for somebody that is trained within um, within mixing and working on on large format consoles. <clears throat> you have an insert section here, so an insert um, of uh, effects onto the track itself. Um, so I can actually put inserts in. So the same way you would work on one of these consoles at the back of the console, um, you know, you can literally root stuff in and out. Oh, let's show my effects section. I can root stuff in and out of these channels. So let's take channel two, for example, um, and I can do that in two ways. I can, uh, I think I can close yeah, that closes like this. Um, so let's take an effect. Let's take any plugin. I don't know, uh, Black Rooster. What have you got for me? The Cypress TT15. Okay, which is uh, I, I actually quite like that for for high end vocal saturation. A bit weird, but there we go. Um, I can I can literally I got an effect on there now. I I have an effect within uh, within my track the same way I would do with like. Um, with Pro Tools in adding it in or in like a matrix format, I have it more in a visual format and I can control this from my mixer. So um, Reason also has this thing called Combinator, um, which um, <clears throat> comes into the utilities section. So there's loads of stuff you can do with signal splitting and, and technical elements of uh, rerouting and um, stuff with like um, CV splitting and, you know, seg I mean, I can put a bloody segregated mixer in here if I want to and start routing. <clears throat> I can start routing like FX on my insert effects like into a, a separate mixer within a mixer and then start you know i've got eq and and and, and crazy things going on um on on this this uh little thing that's just 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 too much that's that's too 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 deep for me anyway the point is uh, you can add in your insert effects um and you can control these actually with, with what's called a combinator so i could actually root in um a combinator and start um like uh, routing the signal into uh, a combinator to control these buttons to change all of my insert effects. I personally don't use that. I don't use this this section at all um, because I like to I like to actually do it visually uh, on the track itself. So we'll just move on from that uh, quickly. Um, this is, however, something that I use consistently, um, and this is your sends and your returns and. If you come into uh, you know the master section of the Reason Mixer the same way that you would come into the two bus of a large format console, um, you can wire in uh, sends and returns. So Reason starts with um, you know, when you boot up Reason, you get uh, a bunch of like standardized. Um, uh, go away standardized uh bits and bobs but you know i can take uh you know anything i can take let's take uh let's go to where, where's my um here's some reverbs okay so let's take uh i don't know uh this stereo verb from waves right let's stick this in let's press tab and it will auto root it to fx send and fx return channel two and three which means that on my console now i can just turn this off and on on channel so i can i can lay like a ton of these down uh, you know, whatever. Let's lay some shimmer down. Um, let's lay the PSP two four two four four five, which is a piano reverb, and you'll see them coming up here. So I can change the the, the velocity um, of these returns. I can actually change the panning of these returns, um, and I can change uh, the uh, the blend level of each of these, and I can switch them on and off accordingly. And I, you'll notice that I've put that. Um, that reverb here on uh, channel two um, and three of uh, my sends and returns on my master section console. Um, and like, 
I, I can add that to other uh, tracks you know I can add that to other vocal parts like obviously not at the same time because it's a send um, but like it's so quick I can stack all of my effects or I can just have a template where I have all the effects that I, I need and I know for certain projects and it's just literally come and switch them on and off and that's super awesome also when you bounce uh, because um, when I'm summing when I'm analog summing um, I have my sends and my receives as a separate channel so I can bring uh, I can manage um, you know the uh, I might not want those sends and returns for example going into my master bus compressor and the way that this is is rooted as, as a door um, you know it, it won't it won't do that the uh, the sends and returns aren't affected uh, from what I understand by the master bus compressor um, so uh yeah sends and sends and and, uh, and returns um uh i can mute i can solo this is all pretty much standard fader stuff on on any door uh but i can also hold alt um and i can automate um so the way that automation works on reason is it opens up an automation channel i can then draw in that automation uh you know so uh let's you know pretty much standard same way you'll see this move on an automated channel um uh and yeah that's that that's pretty cool so you you can automate absolutely anything in reason um unlike another door where uh from what i understand uh the the routing in the coding doesn't allow you to automate everything there's certain plugins and certain things that you can automate reason has got an overlay in its code that allows you to um do it with anything uh let me I don't know, uh, whatever. Let's bring this up. The the big goat on bus one. Uh, it brings up the visual of the of the plugin. Um, I can go automate. Let's automate the sustain. Bang! It brings up an automation for the sustain channel. Um, and uh, I could actually um, remote it. So I don't know. Is my yeah, my, my MIDI keyboard is plugged in. You can't see me, but I, I'm going to change. I'm going to just click remote and move. There you go, on my Arturia. And then I've got that on this channel, my Arturia, which means that actually, there you go, I can turn my keyboard. I can do that with anything. I can do that with anything. I'll do it with this. I'll do it with the tone. So I can sit there and play with my plugins now, like as if I'm on a console. Um, now, I can hit record as i've already uh selected automation um and it will automate there you go so that i mean it's just so quick and just so fast and you just don't even need to go into the detail of of why it works it just kind of does um so uh so yeah that's uh that that, that that's the mixer section um anyway i've gone through the effects i'm just going through my little list um the master bus so let's uh hide these effects uh here is the master bus section of uh reason so on reason you get a standardized um sslg bus compressor and this emulation as a plugin is known to be one of the best digital compressors you can't buy uh you can you can buy it now with the rack extension from reason that's compatible with other doors but this used to be a massive selling point of of reason is that you get this built in like bang i'm i'm i just i hit this button and i'm master bus compressing right um and yeah that that that's that's pretty sweet however on the master section uh one of the main differences with reason is that like okay so here's my master section um i can have a bunch of templates standardized templates these are ones that reason set up but you can set your own up as well with any plugins that you like um so you can now mi i'm mixing in a door right let's say you know i had all my all my tracks blah, 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 and everything was coming into my master fader and then my master fader signal comes in to uh this section um of reason and now I, i'm mastering so like you surely should be able to understand the power of if I'm like lining up, you know, uh, a limiter in reason. So one of the one of the things that I do, let's open up the slate digital limiter, for example, one of my favorite limiters. Um, and yeah, let's just, you know, uh, dial in what, what I would dial in. So I would I would dial this in to get to, for example, minus 10 dB. Um, and I, I can literally test 
all of the settings, all of the, of the velocity settings and the dynamic settings um, on in my mix, like live. There's no like having to bounce it and then putting it into ozone or having to give it to a separate uh, process. Like I can engineer my entire sound and a client sound um, as a final product and test this these settings in and out. So imagine how powerful that is when you're mixing, especially on low end, when you're working with heavy kicks and, and bass, for you to literally be able to switch your mastering section in and out as if you were bouncing and as if you were mastering there and then. Um, <clears throat> And I have some pretty intricate mastering um, chains that I put together. Um, and if you know how I work and you've seen some of my other tutorials on the old Instagram, you'll know that I double stack my limiters. Uh, you'll know that um, I actually uh, place my stereo imaging between limiter one and limiter two. You know, you'll know that I uh, do uh, a lot of shaping kind of pre-signal um, in terms of like my low end, um, and you will know that I also do uh, a fair bit of mid-side um, uh, there's, there's, there's a standard shape that I use in my mastering chain. Um, now I can try all of this out and, and especially when you're working with with uh, mid-side in itself um, like uh, so another mid-side plugin that I kind of really do enjoy is uh, is this RS-56 because it's just so quick and easy to dial in like um, I'm in mid side here I'm just going to push up my highs and I'm going to bang down my lows bang cleaner done and like I'm doing that whilst talking to you and th there you go th there's a standardized mastering chain that like it might be a template uh, that, that, that I might want to use and save um, and uh, yeah I can I can literally bypass this section in and out um, as I'm mixing which I don't know any other door that you can do that. Uh, I know that a lot of people kind of think that mastering should be done separately, but we we all know that that is just a huge waste of time in the modern day world. Um, so one of the other things, let me just chuck on a, uh, a master bus compressor. So I don't have to use the master bus compressor on reason I can switch this in, I can switch this out. Um, I can also side chain my master bus compressor if you wanted to um, side chain uh, 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 high pass um, uh, over your compression so you're not like grabbing hold of your, your kick and your bass. And another thing to point out is that on your, um, on your EQ strips uh, in relation to um, uh, your compressors, um, you, you can actually side chain uh, your, uh, your EQ um, on the same way you can do with your master bus compressor. Uh, you can do that with, with EQ across every single one of these channels. That's not something that I do. And you can, again, you can do that with F2. Um, but uh, yeah, so let's say I didn't want to use the master bus compressor. I will just come in um, and I can use a separate compressor, um, you know, in my master section and I can run that uh, master bus compressor, the settings on it, the dynamics of it, the release on it, which is a huge, massive, massive thing when you are uh, mixing um, into uh, kind of an estimated master is, is this release, um, as well as like uh, the passes uh, with, with the low end, I can really kind of blend this in with where my kick is starting to tail off. And, you know, that's just, it just gets stuff done quicker and it, it just sounds better. Um, Let's go on to uh, something I've got noted down here called Snip Edit. Um, now, I can save so much time in Reason doing a bunch of stuff. Uh, one is Comp Edit and I can change my volumes um, of, of my files really quickly. Um, I also have a bunch of uh, kind of information up here, which is of value to me. So um, I can also change, uh, you know, um, my, my velocity manually and have a visual reading of it. Um, slice edit for me is so important when you're working with hip hop vocals because you will never find a rapper that hits that snare or hits that kick right on point. Um, and I can change the pronounces around um, to like just make sure that it is on snap, that it's on bar. So I can do that by snapping them. Uh, take my snap grid off. Let's, I don't know. Let's take snap grid to 16. I can do that by snapping them. Um, or I can hit S and take snap off. Um, I can hold control and just like and move uh, this uh, this like uh, snap arrow. Um, 
but yeah, as you can see, I, I can literally line up when I'm coming into a rap vocal and someone sent me a raw, uh, raw vocal. Um, like, yeah, I can, I can just snap it into place so quickly and the timing of it is so much better. And it's so like then doing this in another door for me. And you know what I'm doing right now, right guys? Like, you shouldn't be doing this in a door like that. That's you just don't need to be doing that. It's, for a start, it's breaking up the waveform, and you're going to get entry and ex, ex, exit points on on the sound itself. That's just going to create artifacts within the mix. So I love that about Reason. It's a snap edit, and this this is going to actually blow your mind. Um, you hit this button, and you can do pitch edit. So if you're a singer, um, you will you will love love this no one can sing perfectly in key I've, you know it, it, every vocal that you get it has an element within it that is not in key and it's not in tune so you know i can uh within uh let's just see if i can zoom in a little bit more here there we go um so i can change um the the pitch or the the uh the hold of the notes i don't know if that's the, the correct term for it but um i can also uh, stretch each of these sections and I can also change the entry and the exit points which if you were banging this into um, auto-tune so if I was coming into my rack here and I was going to bang this into for example um, Antares uh, so let's chuck it in access right if I'm banging it in access the entry and the exit points uh, when banging this into an auto-tune are like super super important and a lot of people that do auto-tune music will make something chuck it in chuck it in auto-tune and work and, and can't understand why there's so many kind of artifacts going on um within uh, uh that mix and and that is because uh they have not come and manually pitch edited i know there's a bunch of other plugins that you can um put um inside your door and you know what the name just slips my mind but um Again, it comes down to CPU usage. Why would I want a separate tuning plugin inside my door when I can just literally come into my waveform and do it manually? And you know what? If you're really lazy and you don't even have an auto tune and you want to keep things natural, check this. You click correct and it puts everything within estimated chromatic or minor key. And yeah, I mean, guys, tell me if uh, if 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 that just doesn't you know blow the fish out of the pond with a shotgun um and how quickly that is imagine you are working within primarily working within vocal processing work with me or voiceover um and you know you have those kind of three tools just literally right there in front of you built into uh your door um i've gone through uh routing on the rack so yeah i can i can uh route and split any signal um, and reason comes with a bunch of utilities that allow you to split stuff I think I've I've, I've, uh, I've, uh, I've gone through this but um, um, yeah I, I mean I can split any signal so I can take a signal I can I can split that signal you know so if you if you're someone that loves parallel compression like I can split this signal I can take this signal into my audio interface, my multi-channel audio interface, and then bang, I've got it in the analog realm twice. Um, there's no other door that you can do that that easily with. Um, uh, I mean, it, it obviously is just a, a feature of reason. Um, signal splitting and the fact that you you know you're working with uh as if you're working in an analog domain um by just literally hitting the tab key and like yeah I like large format stuff I like analog stuff and you know. Uh, that is 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 the is the power of reason. Now I'm somebody that analog sums. So analog summing is is not, not only do I analog sum, but you know when I'm working on multiple I/O um, and uh, I want to use my outboard gear. So if I want to use my 2500 by API, I want to use my you know um, empir empirical labs EQs, my little freaks, which you have seen in my in my videos, um, or I want to run run stuff out into some of my other compressors. Um, you can do that really, really easily uh, by literally just directing. I can go into any output on my board, in my studio, on my patch bay. Um, you know, I can you know, do this uh, and I can run two tracks at the same time. So here I could, um, that's actually a bus, but you know, we'll pretend that isn't a bus. Uh, I can run these tracks out and, and have them 
immediately in the analog domain visually so none of this like i know people are used to in other doors like pro tools is an example for me like if i, I want to root something and i'm like oh there's a huge list of my of my like my outputs on my io and like oh my eyes are getting tired now which one was it 40 30, like who cares man i just want to pull it and patch it as if i'm holding the cable with with my hand um so when i'm i'm uh doing analog summing i can take all of my uh all of my buses um let's just just create a quick scenario so you can see it and understand it uh, let's say i don't know this was my up here this was my vocal bus uh, i'm going to create a new bus from here uh, let's say this was my i don't know whatever drum bus yeah let's call that my drum bus let's call this my vox bus and let's say this was i don't know my my effects uh, we won't do the send um, and return uh, in this uh, in this example um uh, I can go to my rack. I can pull this across in my rack to a separate section visually so I can see everything. Um, and then, oh, blimey, what have I done there? There we go. No, I've done the same thing there somehow. Below. And then all of a sudden in my rack, I've got a separate section where I can do my analog summing. Um, bust, done. Like, here are all my buses all separated by eye visually um and like so I, I can take these each of these buses i can route each of these buses to output outputs in the analog domain of my studio i could then take these outs on my patch bay run them into any analog equipment that i like and then run that analog equipment back uh through the summer and then back into a stereo uh input I could then come straight back down here and just select, for example, whatever input I routed it to, input one or two, and I could sum the whole damn thing if I wanted to. Alternatively, if I was on my multi IO, I could run all of these buses out and I could bring them all back in. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Uh, I'm actually on the RME ADI2 Pro, so there's only two in and four out on this on this uh, on this mat uh, today. So I've got two audio interfaces. But anyway, the point is, um, if I if I was um, working with the DigiFace today, um, I you know would be able to um, uh, show you the the multiple inputs. Uh, so yeah. Anyway, the point is, you can run your buses out, you can run your tracks out, and you can uh, you I could literally record all of these uh, like back at once from the analog gear back in uh, to reason. And yeah, it's it's just, it's such a quick, pleasant experience. Um, I'm somebody that, like I said, I work on desk on a minute studio, but I've, I've really got my eye on one of the, the smaller format um, API consoles. The box two is what I'm currently looking at. And I'm, I'm literally looking at using that console with reasons routing um so i get kind of the best of both worlds i get like the the ssl experience within suite and then i can route that back out to an api box console run everything analog and bring it back in and th there's like there's guys that i meet that are like why do you use reason i don't get it man why do you use reason and it's like because it's better because i can achieve everything from a theory perspective from a routing perspective from a, a testing perspective when we're talking about kind of track and bus into master or like fx um sends and returns like it ticks all the boxes like just because it's a you know a colorful what looks to be a bit of a toy um like i don't need to boot up pro tools uh to to start doing analog summing um in fact i can do it quicker inside of uh inside a reason um the last thing i want to show you um and this is something if you are a mach machine user or you use mpc or you do sampling um so you don't even need to buy any of that stuff if you work uh with reason reason has a bunch of instruments um so i i, I mean reason has there you go oh, i've got 16 drum pads which are i mean eight of these only work on my archeria but you know i can i can just drag samples in fact i can drag something straight from splice there you go bash straight from splice da, 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 and i can create midi uh through um 
uh, this uh, particular sampler uh, that is uh, is the Kong and comes as standard reason has done since since its release, I believe. Um, one of the other instruments that I like, I mean, it comes with a bunch of synths. It comes with an amazing piano. Um, one of the instruments that I, you know, is is really flawless for my process is the N nxt digital sampler so this immediately turns any midi keyboard into uh into a sampler um i can take a bunch of samples uh i mean why not let's do it this video is already ridiculously long um i can take a bunch of samples Let's say i did that i don't know why i'm doing actually i don't know why i'm doing that on snap i can take a bunch of samples let's say this was these are my vocal chops right i can uh right click and bounce uh two new samples bang there are my new samples uh i can actually let's just reset this device uh where is the blue reset there it is reset oh, i can take now all of these samples i can bang them into the sampler i can map these chromatically there we go and this is now these samples are all on mapped to my midi keyboard um on the little archeria that i've got here on my desk so there's all of those samples uh, i'm going to probably get into this so you can actually see what i'm doing in fact let's move this over here um and I can change all of the the timing, the start points, the end points, um, all of like the LFOs, uh, all of my velocity, just full like in like full modulation, uh, the same way that like machine um, just totally overcomplicates that and tries to sell you a device at the same time. Like, why would I need that? I can I've got a 50 pound mini lab uh, keyboard in front of me that I can turn into a very powerful, very flexible digital sampler within reason. I can literally rip a vinyl chop it um and uh chuck it in you know what and you know that for me is uh is really really powerful um however that's not to say that i don't like uh oh, bloody hell oh it's an instrument isn't it it's not to say that i don't like this baby um you know i'm not putting down serato that's uh I mean, yeah, that's that's that's, that's crazy. Um, but Serato is still not as flexible in terms of uh, uh, the modulation side of uh, of stuff. Um, it's great for chops, but yeah, um, this, this like that's a paid plugin. This comes standard in in Reason. I think this is 99 bucks, and it's worth it, by the way. You know, and and the same with Serum. Serum is uh, I, I pay whatever nine pounds a month for Serum, but you know, I do have a bunch of other synths um, inside. Um, of reason which uh, if you know synthesis um, and you know how to uh, kind of do all of this uh, stuff um, then uh, yeah I mean as to me a digital synth is a digital synth especially when you're working with all the modulation and the LFO stuff so yeah I mean you get all of that standard with with reason um, yeah and uh, that guys is why I mix in reason uh, it's why I, I will always mix in reason uh, it's why I um, run the entirety of my mixing business uh, my freelance mixing business when I'm off desk um, inside um, of reason um, so yeah I will uh, love you and leave you with that